Hello, seventh graders. I hope all is well today. We're on to lesson two, three in our course seven, course three textbook for seventh grade uh, pre-algebra, starting on page 96. I can multiply positive and negative fractions. You have had experience multiplying fractions before. Um, I know for sure in sixth grade. So this is somewhat of a review. The only new thing is now that you're looking at positive and negatives. So we just have to review those rules of a negative times a positive is a negative. Um, so if the signs are different, it's a negative. But if the signs are the same, then it's going to be a positive answer. Okay? So keeping those things in mind. One thing I want to tell you is that I used to dread fractions, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting. I used to really, really feel like I wasn't very good at it. And then I just kind of practiced and I learned this tool, um, this little rule called Shape, Operate, Simplify. And I'm, you've seen the poster in my classroom and the chart. And we're going to work on making a chart throughout this chapter two on how to use operations with fractions. So my hope is that by the end of this, um, unit, you're going to feel really good about your knowledge of how to work with fractions and a little bit better number sense. So if I can do it, you can do it. And just come into this with a nice positive attitude, take some good notes, and really try hard on your NICU. So I'm going to zoom in so we kind of have just one thing at a time here. Our rules for multiplying integers. Like I said, I kind of go by this rule of shape, operate, simplify. Okay, so SOS, it's like fractions, oh no, help me, SOS. So we're going to kind of go through and just look at the rules for one, or the steps, okay? Like I tell you, I don't want you to just memorize steps, I want you to know why, but to get ourselves started, we will. So shape. Shape means, you know, if you're shaping something, you're going to play you're changing it, you're molding it. So when you're multiplying fractions, they have to be in fraction form, Okay. So everything has to be in fraction form. And what I mean by that is sometimes you're given a whole number, and that's not in a fraction form. And sometimes you're given a mixed number, and that's not in improper fraction form. So to change a whole number to a fraction, you just put it over 1. To change an improper fraction to, an, to a, change a mixed number to an improper fraction, this is really two of these added together and a one-third. So what you do is you multiply 2 times 3, that's 6, and then add the one more, so that's the same as 7 thirds. So if you were multiplying with 2 and one-third, if you change it to 7 thirds, if you were multiplying with 4, it becomes 4 over 1. Okay? So our rules. Shape, change it to fraction form first. Second, then you're going to operate. That just means you're going to do the multiplying steps. Okay, we know operations, multiplication is an operation. First, so you can cross cancel if possible. That's just when you're looking for common factors, and you'll see it in examples. But if I had two fourths times, let's see, eight tenths, two shares, a factor of two, two goes into two once, two also goes into ten five times, four goes into four once, four goes into eight two times. So then I really can just multiply, see that I can kind of already have simplified. This is kind of like a early simplifying step, which can save you from simplifying at the end. The third part of SOS is simplify. You can reduce using common factors. So say I wouldn't have on that last one, I had 2 fourths times 8 tenths. Had I not simplified first and I just multiplied across, multiply your numerators, multiply your denominators straight across, I would get 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 10 is 40. Then I'd have to realize they share a common factor of 4. So I divide each by 4, and I end up with 16 divided by 4 is 4. Um, 40 divided by 4 is 10. I still notice now, even then I'm not simplified, and I see 4 divided by 2 is 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I really end up with the same thing I did above if I just simplified ahead of time. So, you know, I like to simplify ahead of time because sometimes the bigger numbers get more difficult to simplify because you have to, there's more factors that could go into them. But it's really up to you on what you're going to do there. But you do need to remember the steps 
shape, change the fraction form, operate, cross cancel if you need to, but then multiply straight across numerators and then denominators, and then to simplify if you still need to. Shape, operate, simplify. Okay, let's give some of those a try. So we're looking at four ninths times three fifths. I'm gonna make kind of my checklist like I do for order of operations too. Since they are already in fraction form, four ninths and three fifths, I do not need to change them. So I'm shape. To operate, I'm gonna try that cross canceling, simplify if I can. Four and five don't have any common factors other than one, so there don't, I can't cross cancel, but three goes into three once, three goes into nine, three times, so now I can multiply straight across. So I see I have four times one is four, three times five is 15. Four and five only share a factor of one, so I do not need to do anything with those two things. They have greatest common factor of one, nothing else can go into them, so my operations are done. Down here, I see 5 twelfths times 3 twentieths. So I'm going to, they're already in fraction form. I want to show you what it looks like if I don't simplify ahead of time. Okay? So if I don't simplify ahead of time, we're going to look at what happens. So I'm going to go to my operation step. I'm going to multiply straight across. 5 times 3 is 15. 12 times 20. Now think about that. 20 times 10 and then 20 times two as well to end up with 240. And we're thinking, oh my goodness, this is what happens. What's a common factor? Maybe I start with five because it ends up in five and zero. I don't know. See, this is where a lot of more mistakes have a chance of happening if I didn't cross cancel before. Um, luckily, I do know that 15 is a factor of both of these. So I could divide by that. And I'm on my simplifying step. 15 goes into 15 once. 15 goes into 240 16 times. So that was lucky that I knew that. But I could have, like I said before, saved myself the heartache there and cross canceled knowing uh, if I rewrite it. Again, showing you 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 24 times. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 12 four times. Now I just have one times one and four times four, and I got there a lot faster um, and didn't have to worry about messing up with my um, what to divide by there, okay? One more, just like this again, they're already in fraction form. Already here, so I don't have to shape them. Um, what I do notice, though, is that I have a negative times a positive, okay? Don't worry. That negative can sometimes just be on the outside like that. Sometimes it's here and sometimes it's there. Um, it all means the same thing. There's one. Okay? So I need to remember what a negative times a positive is. And hopefully our ninja guy helped us. Negative times a positive equals a negative. So I need to remember my answer will result in a negative. So they're already shaped. I learned my lesson last time, and I'm going to stick with the cross-canceling in my operation stage. 5 and 8 do not share any common factors, so I'm going to look at 3 and 6. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 two times, and now I can multiply straight across. Negative 5 times 1 is going to be that negative 5, and then 2 times 8 is 16. So my answer is a negative 5 and 16, and I know I'm done because 5 is prime, and it won't share any factor other than 1 with 16. All right, shape, operate, simplify. Here's where we're going to be in a little bit different of a spot uh, with our shape, operate, simplify. Now we see we have mixed numbers. So with these mixed numbers, now we need to change them into fraction form. Remember, this 4 represents 4 of these. So that's 2 times 4. So I can really do 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 for 9 over 2. Same thing over here. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 
is 8. Now it's a nice and easy, they're in fraction form. I shaped them. I can cross cancel if I need to, or maybe I won't in case some of you forget. Um, multiply straight across. And 9 times 8 is 72. 2 times 3 is 6. So I did my operating. You cannot forget to simplify. What I see here is that my numerator is larger than my denominator, and this should be either a mixed number or a whole number. I know that 6 goes into 60, 10 times, 12 remaining, just 2. So this actually rounds out nicely to the number 12. I wouldn't write it as 12 over 1. That's not simplified. I'd write it as 12. I would suggest pausing me at any time, giving these a try, going back and trying them on your own. Uh, this one, negative times a negative equals a positive. So I know my answer is positive. But first I have to change them to shaping them into whole um, improper fractions. So 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So this is really a negative 13 6. And then I'm multiplying that by 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6 and negative 6 fifths. So again, I know my answer is positive. I may cross cancel. 6 goes into 6 once. 6 goes into 6 once. And I end up with negative 13 times 1 and 1 times 5. That is not simplified because it's an improper fraction. Remember that bigger number, even though it's negative sitting on top of that other one, that's improper. So I say 5 goes into 13 two whole times, don't forget my negative, with 3 of the 5 remaining. All right, a quick word problem for us. Let me zoom out a little bit. Maybe you can try it on your own first and see what you can do. Because fractions are so much part of our real life that it's important you know how to do this. A roller coaster at an amusement park is 160 feet tall. If a new roller coaster is built that is two and three fifths times the height of the existing roller coaster, what is the height of the new roller coaster? I'm going to use my good mathematician skills and make a prediction that this roller coaster, since it's two and some times bigger, I know it's going to be a little bit more than twice as much as the original. So my answer should be for sure more than 300 because 160 times 2 is more than that. But I know it says times, so I know I need to multiply to find this out. So I'm doing 2 and 3 fifths times 160. So 2 and 3 fifths times 160. First, I need to shape them into fraction form. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So 13 fifths times 160. 160 is a whole number, so I need to put it over 1. Now, if I don't cross cancel and I multiply straight across, I end up with like 2,080 over 5. That seems kind of hard to reduce, so I'm going to stick with my cross cancels. 5 goes into 5 once, and it goes into 160 32 times. I know that because I know 5 times 30 is 150, and I know 5 times 2 is 10, and I can add those two together. So then multiplying those across, I get 416, I believe. 13 times 32 is 416 over 1. Since this is a word problem, I know I need to simplify it and label it. 416 feet is the height of the new roller coaster. That's pretty hall, and that's a reasonable answer because it's definitely more than twice as much of the original. One last thing is a word <clears throat> called dimensional analysis, and this is just the process of, let me zoom out here, this is the process of including units of measurement when you compute. Um, you can use dimensional analysis to check whether your answers are reasonable. Just like we did, if I were to answer the last one in inches, it wouldn't have made sense, okay? So we're going to look at a real world thing here. So for instance, the distance equals the rate multiplied by the time. So I just have to make sure that 
I have units attached to my work. So for example here, this little real world thing, it's talking about Marine One, the helicopter used to transport the president, and it's talking about certain speeds. We can do our word problem here. And again, this is in your book as well. So refer to the information on the left, and it says the latest model is VH-71, which has the cruising speed of 172 miles per hour. It has 200 square feet of cabin space and almost double the previous model. So suppose the VH-71 helicopter is traveling at its cruising speed, which we know is 172 miles per hour. And how far will it travel in one and three-fourths hours? I kind of have this part a little bit above where I should, but that's okay. Um, so we use that information that we're looking for how far. So we're looking for the distance. When we know it goes this far per hour, and we're traveling for more than one hour. Okay? So looking at that, if you set it up, it's miles per hour. We can set it up as a fraction because per one hour, so put it over one. Um, and then we have to change this improper, this in, mixed number into an improper fraction. And then we can do the cross cancel here. And we're going to end up with 301. And we write out our answer in units that make sense. Okay? All right, hopefully that wasn't too long. Uh, remember what you can do to review. Please remember to take your NICU and record those two one, two things you learned, one thing you're wondering, and let's get a good start for tomorrow.